Later, after they tiptoed into the apartment and Colling walked past upstairs to tell his mum he was home, leaving out the possibly relevant information that he wasn't alone, and after they'd climbed into the bed downstairs, and after she pulled off his shirt and he hers, and after they kissed, until his lips were numb except for tingling, she said, Do you really feel sad about graduating? I don't know. If I'd done it differently, if I'd gone to college at 10 or whatever, there's no way of knowing in my life would be better. We probably wouldn't be together. I wouldn't have known Hassan and a lot of prodigies who push and push and push and end up even more fudged up than me. But a few of them ended up like John Locke or Mozart or whatever. And my chances of uh, Mozartum are done. Call, you're 17. She sighed again. She sighed a lot. But nothing could be wrong because it felt so good to have her nestle up against him, her head on his shoulder, his hand brushing the soft blonde hair from her face. He looked down and could see the straps of her purple bra. It's the tortoise and the hair. Though, Catherine 19, I lean fast than other people, but they, but they keep learning. I've slowed down and now they're coming. I know I'm 17, but I'm past my prime. She laughed. Seriously, there are studies about this shit. Prodigies tend to hit their peak at like 12 or 13. What have I done? I won a fudging game show a year ago. That's my indelible mark on my human history. She sat up, looking down at him. He thought of her other size, the better and the different ones of his body moving against her. For a, lo- for a long time, she stared at him and they she bit her lower lip and said, Colleen, maybe the problem is us. Oh shit, he said, and so it began. The end occurred mostly in her whispers and his silence, because he couldn't whisper and they didn't want to wake Colin's parent. They succeeded in staying quiet, in part because it felt like the air had been shocked out of him. Paradoxically, he felt as if his getting dumped was the only thing happening on the entire dark and silent planet, and also as if it weren't happening at all. He felt himself drifting away from the one side whispered conversation, wondering if maybe everything big and heartbreaking and inco- incomprehensible in a paradox. He was a dying man, staring down on the surgeon trying to save him. With an almost comfortable distance from the things itself as it really was, Colin thought about the Doc Mantra, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. What a dirty lie. This, right here, was a true abdominal snowman. It felt like something freezing in his stomach. I love you so much and I just want you to love me like I love you. He said softly as he could. You don't need a girlfriend, Colin. You need a robot who says nothing but I love you. And it felt like being stoned and sticks from the inside a fluttering and then a sharp pain in his lower rib cage, and then he felt for the first time that a piece of his gut has been wrenched out of him. She tried to get out as quickly and painlessly as possible, but after she, but after she begged curfew, he began to cry. She held his head against the collarbone, and even though he felt pitiful and ridiculous, he didn't want it to end, because he knew the absence of her would hurt more than any breakup ever could. But she left anyway, and he was alone in his room, searching out anagrams for my missing piece in a vain attempt to fall asleep.